Welcome to the Lockdown Cricket Show. Today we have Mohammad Kashif Majid. He's a first class player of cricket. He has been a national champion in badminton and he is an RJ as well. Welcome Kashif. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? How are you? I'm well, thank you. So, let's get on to the topic that we want to discuss today. Uh the initial thought was to discuss um the National D20 cricket tournament that's going to take place we have six participants the tournament will be played in Multan and Rawalpindi in two phases however there have been some controversy associated with the event especially with some of the well known players pulling out Salman Bhatt pulled out of the tournament because he thought he should have been the first 11 especially in the absence of some of the well known names uh similarly some yes some decided not to play Although uh, it's been officially said that he is pulling out of personal reasons, but it is largely believed that it was indeed him being in the second eleven that he decided not to play. Uh, another one of the fast bowlers, upcoming fast bowlers, Mohammad Irfan Jr., has decided not to play cricket in Pakistan's domestic structure altogether, and he's actually signed a long-term contract in Australia for a club side. So, how do you see this scenario? What's actually going on over here? I think um, when we talk about the current structure and current uh, uh, national T20, um, we are talking about Salman Bhatt first. Uh, Salman Bhatt, thirty-six, thirty-five years of age, and um, uh, he haven't played any, uh, uh, you know, international cricket since his comeback from that match fixing thing or spot fixing thing. So with thirty-six years to his name, I think he's uh, he's a player from the past now, uh, because currently we have uh, we we know our openers, uh, established openers, um, when it comes to the test cricket for the last uh, six to eight months, we have got a quality opener in the form of Fakhar Zaman, who's doing good with in the one day side. Uh, yes, he has got uh, a partner on the other with uh, Imam Ul Haq is there. Uh, then come the T20, where also uh, Fakhar Zaman along with Babar Azam is doing good. So these three formats are covered. Uh, Uh, i think good uh, well uh, when it comes to the, the quality players quality openers so salman but not a, uh, he performed well for wabda but when it comes to uh, you know representing pakistan he was just unfortunate scoring good um, amount of runs bulk of the runs in the first class cricket but didn't get a chance unfortunate for him so now with uh, salman but they have asked salman but to be part of the second 11 i think he said uh, okay if i am not considered for the first lem it's it's really hard uh, for him to be uh, playing for play for the second lem and then think himself to uh, be selected for pakistani team as a former captain of the pakistan and former international player uh, he he believes that he has still got a chance to play but with this second lemon thing i think uh, uh, it's curtain for salman khan uh, salman but so maybe he's thinking okay fine um, i don't want to degrade myself to the second lemon let's quit at this particular moment uh, if they are not asking me to be the part of the uh, first team or first choice opener in the first team uh, let's uh, say it out okay i am not playing right and uh, do you think that there were some other issues with players like maybe some yasam who is represented pakistan at the test some yasam has the has has the same issue the same issue as uh, we are talking about salman but you know um, he uh, he was a consistent performer he is a consistent prom- uh, performer when it comes to the first class cricket he scoring some good runs but unfortunately when it comes to the t20 format he is not that uh, brilliant in the t20 format and um, unfortunately for him they have asked him to captain the second 11 of the balochistan i guess uh, again for me um, the official statement says that um, his mother is not feeling well so he want to spend some time with his mother but for me uh, again that same issue if you are not part of the first 11 being an international player or being someone who's knocking at the door of the pakistani cricket team you you might feel Uh, disheartening for you at times, and you think, okay, let's not play. And given some sort of official statement, uh, this is some sort of you know protest on record from some years ago. But in a very polite manner, that I don't want to play. Uh, I, I I just want to take a break from the cricket. And T Twenty is isn't my format too. So this is where some years ago um, lacked. But when it comes to Irfan Junior. i think he was nowhere near 
when it comes to knocking at the door of the Pakistan. Recently, uh, we have got so many quality fast bowlers coming, um, uh, coming and replacing each other. You know, Sman Shirwari didn't get a chance in the recent series. So did, uh, you know, uh, Hasnain. So does uh, Musa Khan. There are so many others who are knocking at the door of the Pakistan who have played one or two matches, but still uh, thinking or still finding difficult to get into the final 11. So when these bowlers aren't getting chance, so Irfan Jr. It's, it's way down in the list. So he, for, for him, he, actually his move is for himself that he wants to go to the Australia and play there because the two important things, you know, talking about Irfan moving to Australia is just not about he is not he, he thinks for himself that he's not. Uh, capable enough to play for Pakistan or second important thing the amount of the financials involved in the current setup are just not good for any players because uh, we are talking about a contract and we are talking about a contract with the PCB and no departmental cricket so no salary no pay package nothing for the player it's just a four month cricket and uh, for you earn in the four month period of time that is domestic cricket and you have to spend that fourth month earning um, into a 12th month spending if you are a bread earner of your family it's it's getting difficult for everybody every cricketer these days apart from the international centrally contracted players uh, um, it's getting difficult for every uh, bread earner of the uh, family to uh, play cricket uh, domestically and uh, you know spend money that amount on the family throughout the year so maybe this is where Sal Irfan um, has uh, thought of leaving Pakistan and going to Australia and finding some reasonable financial support uh, playing in Australia or Australian domestic cricket. That is a very valid point. Uh, we have actually previously discussed as well the economics of sports, especially cricket in Pakistan. How do you see this structural change? Do you really think that in the longer run Pakistan can benefit with just six teams or should departmental cricket be back? Should it be back at the first class level or at least at great cricket level. What's your take on that? Um, for me, Armagan is a 50-50 thing. Uh, talking about the, uh, the role of departments um, in the Pakistani setup, it's huge. It's huge when it comes to the financial aspect of uh, of the game. It it was huge when it comes to the social security of the players, you know, uh, social and financial security of the player. Uh, but when it comes to the quality of cricket, some might argue, uh, 16 teams playing a first class uh, play in the in the first class arena uh, 16 into 11 into plus substitute and you know the other plays that is huge amount of first class cricketers playing in the one season uh, just to uh, comprehend the performances uh, just to find out who's the best option it's it's getting difficult when 16 team plays uh, playing in first class arena and uh, Definitely, that, that, that wasn't the quality we were expecting at the international level, uh, because the first class playing first class is uh, is is getting very easy. You know, uh, you can play for department, you can play for uh, for the region, and uh, when it comes to uh, you know basics of the cricket, that is dying out. There is no school cricket in Pakistan. The club, the structure of the club cricket is dying out. Uh, people don't want to play uh, for the club cricket in the longer uh, terms. You know, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, living in Islamabad, we hardly find a ground Saturdays and Sundays where club cricket is going on because every Saturday, Sunday is booked by some corporate, some uh, you know uh, company, and they're playing their their fantasy cricket in, on Saturdays and Sundays. So. Uh, talking about the working days, then the people, the, the players, then the sportsmen, the club cricketers, they are all either um, taking their education on the working days or someone may be involved with their job. So this is where we are lacking. This is where I think changes need to happen. Club cricket now um, need to bring people uh, and clubs should pay them to play for themselves. We are talking, you know, the change, the transition I'm talking about, the domestic cricket, the transition was not smooth enough. We are talking about good quality teams at the top of the uh, domestic arena. That is six teams, quality players playing against each other. But uh, who was, uh, you know, uh, there is no system of recce for these teams. Established names are playing first class cricket. If someone wants to get established in this domestic arena, there is no opening for himself or for that guy. Uh, if someone is good playing good cricket in the in his school, um, 
there is no one to catch uh, there is no one there to catch that student that player and pluck from the uh, you know uh, school cricket and bring him into the national fold so this is where we are lacking when we talk about uh, uh, creating infrastructure it's 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 from the down to or bottom to the up sort of scenario you create a good uh, grassroots nurseries at the bottom of your structure that is school cricket that is club cricket that is uh, sunday leagues saturday leagues if these are formed on the good basis then we have got a solid structure you know a, a building a building uh, starts from the base it's just not the up you st- you create the top story and then you started thinking oh okay, let's go down and create the basement of that building that was that mistake pcb made you start from the bottom first of all for me six team playing against each other quality but how do you uh, how do you as a pcb how do you manage to rotate a player from first eleven to the second eleven or uh, bring a player from you know a club cricket to the second eleven uh, from the last year to this year uh, there is nothing uh, club cricket no club cricket going on in, in, in the entire country so in, in these 18 months or the 12 months someone really worked hard and established himself as a good bowler or the batsman there is no opening for for him to get uh, selected in the second 11 team or in the first 11 team so he has to wait till pcb announces a policy where talent hunt should be made uh, with due apology to pakistan cricket board this talent hunt these days is done by the franchises there is no pcb there is no club cricket there is no school cricket where pcb has you know got an eye uh, nowadays we find franchises doing this talent hunt schemes all around the pakistan throughout the year salute to lahore kalandas team you know dilbar hussain coming from uh, a tennis ball or table cricket haris rauf three years back four years back playing tennis ball or table cricket in the streets of islamabad in the grounds of islamabad imagine for a moment ramadan it didn't get a chance to play for the region islamabad region and he played for the pakistan so there is a there is a route which is we, we call the easier route uh, you go you uh, you ball some good deliveries capture them in your mobile send it to some of the franchises they'll call you to their camps you get selected to their team you play some quality cricket with their uh, you know good players around in that franchise you play in the psl and you get selected for the pakistani team so if this is the route or this is the easier route for me then what's the uh, what is associations or pcbs doing out there so they have to find something because they are the pioneers and they are the automatic authority to select team for the pakistan no way a franchise can select a team or select players for the pakistan it's it's pcb's responsibility to go for the talent hunt programs to nourish the uh, talent on the grassroots level unfortunately pcb is just not there at the grassroots level and yes franchises are there I totally agree with you on that part and uh, this is something that I believe we need to fix. Uh, Major League Baseball is a great example of this. They actually have a scouting system. Each of the 30 teams in the league have six further teams in the structure that feeds them players and they actually have professional scouts that would go to schools and colleges and look for players even in the individual and independent leagues that are not under the MLB uh, radar. Uh, PCB can replicate that and I uh, agree with you 100% that we needed a top-down, um, sorry, a bottom-down approach, not a top-down approach. You just can't fix things at the top and then hope that everything will fall in place at the bottom. Uh, I think another thing that you mentioned and that is very important that ESL has become an easier route to come into the national team. And uh, a lot of the players who have been working really hard in the domestic system, they don't actually get that sort of a chance. And maybe four good performances in PSL might get you selected in the national team. Uh, This is a very interesting uh, discussion we should hold another day. Thank you so much for your time today. And we hope that PCB can conduct a very successful national T20 Cup from starting from tomorrow. And hopefully it would be good enjoyment. Thank you so much for your time, Kashif. And it's great to have you on the show. Thank you.
thank you thank, thank you player talking to you